Well, from what I'm seeing, the clock over there on the wall looks like it's a. Yeah, looks like it's a little past 6:30. So I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order and ask for the roll, please. Patterson, Petrie, Present. Portado, Present. Goss, here. King, here. Marsh, Esri, present. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, move on then to approval of agenda and addenda. Is there such a motion? Moved, Moved by Mr. Goss. Second. Seconded by Ms. Petrie. Yeah. Any corrections? There is an one that looks like it got uh, made the items under approved by ELUC on the agenda. All the dates need to be like 1117. It, where it says 17, it needs to be 18. Yes. So 1118 through 20, 123118. Yeah, the, um, the agenda is wrong on those, so those need to be technically corrected. But other than that. Well, can you stop cutting and pasting? <laughs> 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 that was my problem. <laughs> 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 uh, if there are no further Additions or corrections, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That's approved. Uh, then we have the approval of minutes from the... Oh, go ahead, Patsy. Uh, did you mean to uh, move number seven to the end of the agenda because we have somebody here who wants to speak? or? Well... We've got public participation first. Okay, okay. So, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, yeah, and had talked it over with Mr. Hall earlier that if um, that if there was someone here for the R and E licenses, that we'd probably move it to the back. But there's no one here for the R and E licenses, Good. so Good yeah, not a problem, not a problem. Okay, then we'll move on to the approval of minutes from the ELUC committee meeting, November 9th, two thousand seventeen. Is there any? Is there a mo motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, I'll make a motion. <laughs> Mr. King moves. Is there a second? <laughs> seconded by Ms. Furtado. Second, seconded by Ms. Furtado. Uh, is there any additions or corrections to be made on those? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Aye. Thank you. That passes. We will then move on to public participation. We have one, Mr. Miss e Yvonne Sadler, and if you could would again come forward to the microphone, please. And Tammy's going to turn the microphone on. Thank you, Tammy. I'm Yvonne Sadler, and I live at 2410 East Illinois, and uh, we, I'm still talking about my neighborhood, of course, and I wanted to say that uh, there hasn't been really any improvement. It, it takes, uh, I understand that the Sheriff's Department and the, uh, are setting up a new ordinance so that they can take the cars off of the street that could be towed off the street that don't belong there. But that probably about the first of the year. During that time, <clears throat> I have seen two or three more cars left on the street. But you understand, I think as soon as they're notified that these cars are going to be towed, they're going to move them up into their yards. And so then you have another problem, which we have no solution for at this time. But, and I have I've taken a lot of pictures out there, but I haven't started on the cars because that wasn't the most important thing. But they have to be addressed. We're getting to look like a junkyard out there. And uh, 
cars, you know, automobiles and things like that. So I want you to be aware of that. <clears throat> and I do know how hard you guys work. And I, the one thing I didn't realize was that we already had the ordinance to be, that could have been enforced. And they're well written. I read them um, every time I think of something, I go and look it up. And they're there so that if we can get, you know, a solution to work on how they uh, can do that. And I understand from Jamie, you guys are starting to uh, address some of those problems out there. And I presented her with some more pictures today. So that would be, there's the smaller ones. But this is the third worst one out there. I present, I gave her five pictures of the same area. And it's just like, a, you know, just, I don't know how they can get all those things in the yard. And then um, I think that's basically it. That if we can just keep going and, and really think of it, each problem as an individual, because I guess that's how this works, that you have the street and then you have uh, oh, yeah, I did have some good news that one of the houses out there, the tenants moved out, so the landlord is going to have to deal with that mess. So Jamie won't have to do that. And I did see uh, someone out there checking it out to see what they're going to have to do. And, of course, it'll have to be a dumpster. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Uh, yes, Patsy? Uh, the microphone. Thank you. Uh, is it possible to suspend the rules so we might uh, ask a couple of questions of our participants? Sure, I'll, I'll allow it since we've had interaction with them before, okay. Ms. Sadler. Yeah. I just, I just so if, if you're willing, Ms. Sadler, of course. Sure. Uh, one is, uh, could you give me the citation of the ordinance that you referred to that's already on the books? Oh, the one about the garbage dumping, and it, uh, I just read it tonight. It was uh, like three, four, and from three down through four, four, the, however it's written up. Uh, and that's in the nuisance ordinance, isn't it, Mrs. Yes, Sandler? nuisance. Okay. And it is well written. And I'm so glad that at least that is done and that you guys don't have to start from that point. That would be another year of meetings to. Okay, uh, I appreciate the, uh, both of you giving me the uh, help with the citation on that. And then you referred to uh, that the sheriff is working on an ordinance related to. With the county board and the state's attorney. On uh, the issue of being able to tow cars after they've been on the street X amount of time is well, that? Well, don't have legal stickers, and they're flat tires, and wind uh, is not shot out and such. Okay, so they're uh, they're going they're to have some criteria. That. That's what I understand. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Sadler. Um, I see Mr. Van Pelt walked in. Do you wish to say anything tonight for public participation? And if, if go ahead and come to the microphone, just ask that you would fill out a sheet, please. Just for the record, would ask that you'd fill out a sheet and hand it in before the end of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, just thank the board. Thank you for listening to our problems. You know, everything's laid out on the table. We just need your help. It's just so frustrating. And just help us and give us some direction on what you want us to do, how we can help the board, how we can be active in our community to make it a better place. So just some direction from the board and any help that can be offered to us, we'll, we'd truly appreciate Thank you, Mr. Van Pelt. Uh, seeing no other public, we will close that and move on to communications. Are there any communications at this point in time? I guess I'll just wish everyone a 
Merry Christmas coming up because this is the last ELEC meeting before Christmas. So everyone here and listening at home or whatever, <laughs> watching at home, any, <laughs> anything else? Did you have something, Mr. King, that you were, or, or yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chair, I, I move that we enter into the closed session pursuant to uh, Chapter 5, Illinois uh, Compiled Statutes, 120-2C6, to discuss the setting of, of a price for sale or lease of property owned by Champaign County. I further move that the following individuals remain present, Planning and Zoning Director, Recording Secretary, and the Zoning Officer. Thank you, Mr. King. Um, yeah, this is with, in relation, obviously, to the next item, the closed session. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Um, Moved by Mr. Goss. Um, I suggest we probably move into the Putnam room, and we'll carry on there. You'll need a roll call vote. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right, Mr. Weibel. But um, as for the roll, please. Patterson. Petrie. Yes. Portado? Yes. Goss? Yes. King? Yes. Marsh? Esri? Yes. Yeah, well, so we will be going into closed session. For those in the audience, we'll be back out, hopefully. Not, I, don't, I don't believe it'll take very long, and then we'll carry on with our meeting and out here in the public. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we're back into open session. We still have all five original members of the committee here, so we still have a quorum. Uh, to original to start the meeting, I should say, not just like original. Uh, we're now at line eight, items to be approved by ELUC. We have the annual renewal of recreation and entertainment license. Um, if there's no objection, I'd take uh, an omnibus motion for these, I'll read them out. And we do have the one on the addenda, addendum. Um, first, I, we have Curtis Orchard, 3902 South Duncan Road, Champaign, 1 1, January 1, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Two, we have Gordyville, LLC, 2205 County Road 300 North, Gifford. Again, January 1, 2018 to the 2, December 31st, 2018. And then off the addendum, we have Alto Vineyards, 4210 North Duncan Road, Champaign, January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Ms. Petrie. Seconded by Mr. King. Discussion on these. Ms. Petrie. Um, uh, just uh, make sure for the public record, these have all been vetted and in the past there have been no problems. Thank you very much. Further comments, questions? Mr. King, did you have? Yeah. Just microphone. No problem. Uh, I didn't remember doing this last time, but are, are they always redacted or? Okay. All right. Yes. And there are certain things that you can ask to be redacted, I believe, on those, like certain, your phone numbers and stuff like that, too. If I mean, well, some people uh, don't care, but... The personal data, social security yeah. numbers and things like that. Further discussion? All three of these are obviously fairly long-term organizations, parties, whatever you would say, companies in the county. Okay, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you, that passes. Uh, we then move on to nine items to be recommended to the county board. We have A, joint grant applications to Illinois Housing Development Authority Land Bank Capacity Program. Seeing as how we don't, haven't had a lot of information on this, I guess would we prefer to have Mr. Hall Fill us in on this first and then have discussion before we get a motion at the, Mr. Hall, go ahead. Okay, I put at your desk um, a draft county board resolution. Uh, this is a difficult item because um, it, 
if there is interest in an, in uh, being part of the application, we don't have that application and it's, we're not likely to have it even by the date of the board meeting. Um, by the way, I wanna apologize for misstating in the cover memo that ELUC didn't recommend the land bank back in April. ELUC did, it went to the county board and the county board decided not to pursue it. Uh, I'm assuming that was due to cost. This grant would make up all of that cost. It would make up other costs also that would be incurred, but I have no idea what those costs are gonna be. Uh, so the draft resolution in front of you uh, would support participation in the application provided that costs don't exceed 4,500 without prior county board approval. Now that's, that's even recognizing that 4,500 would be reimbursed, but again, you still have to pay it to begin with and then wait for the reimbursement. I'm assuming the county board has some concerns about that. Secondly, nothing in this grant says, oh, and by the way, you have to actually form a land bank after we give you the grant. Uh, it's a good thing it doesn't say that, but it does leave one to wonder, are we obligated to actually then do something? And so I'm, again, I, I can't tell the county board how much it might cost to be part of an ongoing land bank. Uh, and so uh, condition 1B says that, you know, at this point, uh, we're not gonna be obligated to be a part of a land bank. Now, if you think the county board won't have those concerns and that we already know all the costs would be covered, maybe all that we need is just a, a simple affirmation that the county board is willing to be a part of the joint application, but um, that would surprise me if it were that simple. Questions on this? Oh, One last thing. we. We do have a, I do have a meeting on December 11th and Deb Busey has been invited and plans to attend. The first time all the jurisdictions will discuss this application. I'll get more information then and I'd be happy to report back at the county board. Um, but at this point, this is literally all I have. Mr. Goss. Yeah, I apologize. I, I remember talking about this, but I didn't have time to go back and look at the video. Explain to us what a land bank does again. Um, well, a land bank is intended to, to replace the normal tax sale, although I think there would be an ongoing need for tax sale for some of the things that come up. But for, for example, uh, disposition of these dangerous structure properties, we could give those over to the land bank and let the land bank do all the marketing and um, hopefully, you know, a land bank would develop a reputation for having properties for sale. So I think that could be a benefit. Now, again, we, we may have, we have 10 dangerous structure properties. Not all of those properties are gonna become county properties. So I don't wanna suggest that that's gonna be a really huge, important, critical element. It would be handy, but I can't put a number on how valuable it would be. The municipalities see a land bank as a, as a different thing. They see it as a way to actually uh, aggregate. aggregate properties uh, because, you know, to, to, to make sure that whatever happens is what they want to have happen. I just don't see the county board having that need. Uh, it, it is true that the county board could use a, ban a land bank to do other things that a county might be interested in, but all those things require money. And, um, I, you know, so I don't see the county board benefiting in the same way the municipalities. I think it would help the municipalities application if the county board would be willing to be a, a co-applicant, but I, I can't tell you what that means for the long run. Ms. Petrie. Uh, well, from an urban planning standpoint, I am very much in favor of this, but I'd like to throw out a couple of other things that a county could think about, not tomorrow, but in the long range of uh, what the county could be doing with land banking, and that is you can use that for leveraging with the municipalities and do some trading back and forth. That could be quite interesting in helping with economic development. That's one of the things that 
uh, has been talked about uh, for the county to be thinking about, but the county doesn't do that in a very robust manner, and this starts opening some of those opportunities and, and doors to do that. It's probably a little bit harder for the county because we're like this around the municipalities to aggregate large acreage, which would really allow that kind of leveraging. But there's some interesting things across the country uh, that uh, different communities have done with the counties and uh, leveraging development and getting development in the areas where they would really prefer it happening. So just a couple of other thoughts on the possibilities. Ms. Furtado. Uh yeah, I mean, I would concur. It seems to me that any time that we can um, join together with other planning entities in our region in order to like facilitate conversation and like joint effort um, is really important. So it, it seems to me that that this is the kind of thing that we should be trying to do more of. Mr. King. And, uh, so I, I would echo that. I think I'm just not as clear. Like I, I understand the the county's participation just for the sake of uh, you know really wanting to work together. I, I understand that part. But I, when I think of what we would gain from from this, at this point, we're just talking about feasibility. We're not talking about um, having to actually make decisions at this time. Just just for them to do. Well, uh, again, that goes back to um, the grant application and, and the supporting information doesn't say that, you know, there has to be a land bank established at the end of the process. Um, so uh, at this point, the only thing that we've ever actually discussed in any kind of firm way is just simply a feasibility study. Um, now, Vermillion County has established a land bank, and it is up and, and running. I don't know how much it's done to date. Um, I suspect the situation may be a little different, given that I don't... Vermillion County is a much different situation than Champaign County, and I can understand why the, the, the county there might have a land bank. I assume the city is part of it. Uh, they're probably working together jointly. Um, I haven't had a chance to call over there. I don't even know who to call, frankly. Um, I can try to Land find... Bank yeah. Um, and again, I'll, I'll know more after Monday, and I can keep the committee members apprised of what I find out on Monday. The other question is I'm not as clear about is, does a land bank, and just in your opinion... Does it reduce uh, the ability for the regular Joe to acquire uh, potentially a property within, say, for instance, Rantoul, where I know that there are po possibilities there? Um, it, it could because the reason the municipalities want to want a land bank is to make sure that what they consider appropriate things happen. Right off the bat, the person that's looking to buy a property cheap and to do something dirt cheap, that is not going to happen in what the municipalities are hoping to see done. Um, in fact, one of the reasons why land banks have been getting more popular is to make sure things like that don't happen and to make sure that uh, something more valuable happens. Now, that's only going to happen when you find someone willing to go through the extra cost and, and time to make sure that nice thing happens. Um, I know that uh, Jamie recently shared a list of the properties that we've been working on with um, someone who regularly buys properties at tax sales uh, because this individual didn't even know that we had this list. And so right off the bat, we can see that a land bank would be some help, but we can surmise that a land bank isn't going to be free. They're going to, somebody's going to have to pay for the overhead. This program will pay for that overhead in the first few years, but not forever. So uh, it, it's a mixed bag. I, I think, I mean, to me, this looks like a great way to get land banks 
get more interest in land banks. Unfortunately, um, they're such a rare thing downstate, there isn't a lot of useful information about them at this point. Ms. Petrie. Well, and if you really want to push the envelope, it would be a terrific tool and it's based on cooperation among all the various entities in our county to really start thinking regionally within our county and development and economic development. And there is a leverage point and that is when somebody comes in, you really have some leverage because you've amassed a good chunk of land to, together. And so that is a very nice win-win tool to move toward things that whatever the entity is within which the land bank is housed uh, can do things that that entity thinks they want to have happening in their, their community. So it's really a nice positive thing and sometimes, most of the time things go into a trust to preserve certain areas, but you can also use land banking to preserve land so that it stays in a form that it is originally. So it's a it's a very it's a very good tool. Ms. Roll. So one thing I would appreciate direction on tonight is if you think the resolution should go to the county board in this very restricted format, or maybe uh, back off some degree. Um, <laughs> apt term. Ms. Furtado. I just want to make sure that I, I've got this completely. I have two questions. So first of all, would we get to decide which properties we wanted to put into the land bank? And then could we still, if we had a property we wanted to dispose of the way that we currently do, we could still do that, correct? That, that's my presumption. Okay. And then second, this right now is just a grant for the feasibility study, which would probably, the result of that study would give us a clearer picture of what that would look like here, right? So this is a grant to do the study about the land bank, correct? Is that an accurate assessment? The, the grant would pay for all of the costs of establishing okay. a land bank, and you know the, the feasibility study is just part of those okay. costs. It would also, this grant could also pay for demolitions, uh -huh. and it actually pays for more, for more, uh, I mentioned earlier that when we do the dangerous structure demolition, we have to get appraisals and title searches. Mm -hmm. This grant could also pay for those things for any of those properties. So this is actually a much broader grant, even in regards to demolition than what mm -hmm. the previous grant was. Um, but all of that has to be, you know, as you know, written into the grant sure. application. Sure. And, and it's 100% it's reimbursable? Yes. Well, I mean, there, yeah. there will be a, a maximum amount that yeah. they make the award for. Okay. Nope, Ms. Peter. Okay. Uh, I've been doing just a quick and dirty. Um, when I was facetious about Land Banking 101, it actually comes up Land Banking 101, and... Um, uh, they hold conferences to talk about the pros and cons and how to go about it. So it really is not anything to run away from at, at all. And it, the potential of what it will open up in how we think about our planning and our land use um, could be quite, very, quite interesting. So. Does anyone at this point in time care to make a motion to forward this to so moved moved by miss petrie to forward the draft as presented to the county board is there a second second seconded by mr king is there further discussion do we want to leave it? mr goss sorry do do we want to leave it this restricted miss petrie do we, do we want to leave it this restrictive or do we want to, as you say, go for broke? Uh, I, would, I would hope that uh, Mr. Hall will go forward at this meeting and he's heard our comments 
and then come back with a, uh, come back to us and report some of these things and see if we're comfortable with what's evolved from that meeting. And are you willing to sort of push the envelope as you have these conversations? Mr. Weibel, but just just a clarification, uh, John. You're not asking for it. This is just a draft for right. information on this is right. correct. So we're we're just pushing it through. Is that correct? Well, it, it, it's a draft for uh, the county board meeting this month. Okay. So all right. So it is okay. So that's, I wasn't. I just want to make that clear. That, that, okay. Ti time is short, and okay. I can report back after the meeting on okay. Monday. And who knows? Maybe. Maybe the folks at the meeting on Monday can can demonstrate why uh, there shouldn't be a fear of going for broke. Yeah. I mean, maybe they have. I think. Go ahead forward and make changes to the board meeting. Then. Thank you, Mr. Weibel. Ms. Furtado. Sorry, I have two more questions. So, are they uh, they anticipating applying to the January fifteenth deadline? I assume they are, but maybe they realize that we need more time. Mm -hmm. But as you, I mean, as you know. The early bird gets the yeah, worm. Right, yeah. Later bird gets a smaller worm. And I, I also noticed that there's there's actually two grant applications. Is it so? Would we then, if we receive the first phase, would we then be eligible to go back and get the the TAN grant? Well, I, my impression is that second grant is actually for the people who might be doing our feasibility study. I see. Okay. And and if we could involve someone in that study. Don't as part of that grant, you know, that might improve our, our chances. That's something I expect to hear more about okay. on Monday. Okay. So they might be more conjunctive than yes. one, two. Okay. That's my understanding. Thanks. Further discussion on this at this point? Ms. Petrie. Uh, something else, uh, Mr. Hall can't do it right now, but I'm just doing some quick and dirty um, reading Fort Collins Eyes Changes to Affordable Housing Land Bank. There, I mean, there's a lot of models out there to look at across the country as we progress along this process and after you have a chance to see what others within the county are thinking about. But I mean, it's just, there's a lot that can be done. Anything else or we, okay. All in favor of forwarding this to the county board, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. That passes unanimously. Uh, we will then move on to other business. Is there any other business? Mr. Hall, did you want to speak to this? or I mean, It's yeah. your call. What they're doing in Detroit also. Or, given, the public, given the public participation, I, okay. I don't see a great okay. need to. Anything else from the committee under other business? Seeing none, chair's report, I have nothing other than, again, just Merry Christmas. It's that time of year. Uh, you just think of something? Oh. Well, I was wondering if the committee wanted the uh, grant application on the consent agenda or not. Pro I probably keep it off the consent. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Yeah, to keep it off the consent agenda. The chair, so then, designation of items will be placed on consent agenda. Nothing will keep it off. Yeah, because. Um, and with that, with no <laughs> objection, we're adjourned. Thank you.